Greetings, Project Mike. You are heading for Isla Hope, one of the failed experiment islands for InGen. You've been assigned to recover all of the assets on the island, to recreate the park and assist the scientists in researching the animals further. So once you make it to the island... Commander! Commander Yu-1! Do you still receive me? Oh, what the heck is that? Oh no, I'm not gonna make it! After a few hours later, I woke up to the noise of some critters crawling my way. Oh, what? Uh, help! No. Huh? It must all have been but a dream, but I couldn't let that get the better of me, so I set out on a new path to survive. But the very inhabitants in this very land Whoa. were notorious. Jesus! I wake up on the beach a third time only to run into a mysterious package further down the beach. Hmm. The package itself had a note that read that today's video is sponsored by Java. Java is a marketplace made for gamers by gamers. They have an individually curated group of verified sellers that are delivering amazing value for completed PC builds at some of the best prices on the internet. They also offer the opportunity to upgrade your graphics card by buying the old one, so you can offset the cost of your new GPU upgrade for Java in a convenient, fast and efficient way. Getting you back to that dinosaur game we all know you love will be faster than you can count dodos. Java has its own Discord community massing over 9k members with the offer of ton of buying, selling and troubleshooting assistance as well as game nights contests and tons of giveaways. I've had to build a lot of pieces in my day and something that could have been very valuable tool is the ability to search through multiple builds and pick one that would best fit my needs. It has a wide range of price points and options to fit you as well. They take away the stressful situation of you trying to match PC parts together. We all know that the new Arc Ascended is here and the demanding system requirements have made a lot of my friends realize it's time for an upgrade. <gasps> if you want to skip the hassle of researching, buying and building a gaming PC for yourself, let one of Java's verified sellers build one for you. They will be running huge sales for Black Friday and the holiday seasons as well. So visit the site by clicking my link in the description to get started, and I will see you all on the ARC. Thank you Java for sponsoring this video and supporting the channel. I had a very big task ahead of me and that was to try to survive and then eventually find the very scientists oh. on this godforsaken oh. island. With the ship going down, it left me with only my pants, so I had to do everything for survival including killing the very prehistoric dinos for their hide and meat. I managed to come across a supply drop with some goods and armor, so I would be somewhat warm during the cold nights. I was walking around trying to find a viable spot for camp right now since the night was upon me. A sneaky smart girl came at me while I was scouting the lower beach. Oh my god! Oh man, I managed to get away! Weirdly enough, I managed to pull a wardrobe out of my butt, and I checked out what kind of clothes were available for me to wear. Wow! I looked around for a while, and I found what I liked, so rate the outfit, boys. I settled down next to the water, so I could quench my thirst more often. Then I spotted a raptor coming my way, but I wasn't high enough level to make Ebola yet, so I submerged myself to get away. But I did not expect an aquatic fossil to sneak up on me. No! <laughs> I died by a Tylosaurus. I didn't see it at all in the water! So, I was thinking of risking it and going the opposite way, but the Rex saw a brand new toy Hello. to play with. Why is the Rex looking at me? No, 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 Hi. no, no. No! You don't see me! Then I made a canoe to move away from this area, but the Tylosaurus was back Dude. again. How am I supposed to get into the water? Why is there so many Tylosaurus here? There's two of them! I moved to the other side of the small island to get to the mainland. Holy smokes, that's so many dinos there on the beach. This is definitely Jurassic Park in its glory. When I reached the mainland, I saw a couple of fish flopping on the beach, so I went over to investigate. Before the day was over, I found a safe spot after a bit of searching, so I could make an outpost. I placed down a few pieces so I could call this my home for now. There was a bit of metal nearby, so we'd be able to make a bit of metal tools eventually. 
The island had some hidden secrets as there was a note just laying on the ground. I quickly ended the life of a sheep for some of that golden mutton. At the start of day 4, I had to put up some gates to prevent dangerous diners from entering my safe space. I then made a bit of narcotics so I would be able to domesticate the flyer to further explore the island. I quickly killed off a tech parasaur for its mechanical parts. I got then jumped by a perlovia. Awesome. Yeah, I love it. I scouted the parasaur I could befriend so it would be able to aid me in making more narcotics and pharmaceuticals. I took the parasaur out to farm a lot of mushrooms. They will come handy to me. Afterwards, I was out hunting for something else to ride on. But this Perlovia invaded my safe space. Whoa, Perlovia! I wanted to get my stuff back, but the Perlovia was literally on my bag. After a bit of sprinting, the Perlovia was nowhere to be seen and I managed to get my gear back. I wanted that bird though, but for some reason it got Thanos snapped out of existence. What? I was basically cherry picking which Pterodon was better, and I just knocked this one out. But I noticed one small problem. I wasn't level 38 yet, so I couldn't make a saddle for a Terra. Then I ran into a blue drop with a pretty decent crossbow blueprint. That would come super handy for me right now. I actually went out in search of a different tame that I could ride on to level up my character. Then I saw an Isla Sorna Raptor that I attempted knocking out. But it couldn't survive my trank arrows for some reason. I saw an albino nearby and this one survived my trank arrows and got knocked out eventually. I went back to the base to make a saddle real quick for the raptor. The raptor attacks really fast and rips and tears its targets. Quite vicious. I went out to the red forest in search of resources but I got jumped by a kitty cat out of nowhere. No! Well, back at base when I respawned, I was able to make a Terra saddle now, so I took him out to fly back to my gear and raptor. But I screwed up again, and I got jumped by the same Thyla. Whoa! Okay! I'm dead again. I didn't have much left to use, so I basically ran back to my body, being extra careful and checking all the trees of Thylas. I managed to make it back, but the Terra had to sacrifice itself for me. Rip in pieces, you will be missed. And not too far away, I found another Terra that could be the very replacement for the one I lost. I was gonna knock it out, but got caught by a flying rock. Running back to the body wasn't really easy either. I actually somehow managed to get back to my body, but my raptor died to the golem instead. The Terradon was still alive, but I had no raw meat to give it, so I gave it my meat. <laughs> I managed to get back to the base and I planned my next step for the day. I was gonna need some crystals so I would be able to make a good chunk of useful things so I ventured out in search of that. I found a cave with a little pond with a few trilobites that I could kill and harvest for useful items, like pearls. I dragged them up on the beach to kill them easier. Um. Then I continued my flight and I was pretty sure there could be some crystal at the top of this mountain. Jackpot. There was quite a large amount of it up here. I was gonna be stockpiled with crystal. With the crystal, I was able to make a few pokeballs so I could keep the dino safe in a container. Back at the base, I placed the mannequin down to get some good night's sleep for the day. On day 10, I spotted a mysterious airdrop heading my way. It contained a note, binoculars, and a radio. I had set my frequency to the radio and someone responded on the other side. Are you the one I've been waiting for? This is Private Mike. Over. Are you receiving me? Yes, I am. I heard your ship went under and I've been trying to find you, but to no avail. I recently picked up on some slight disturbances around your area, so I figured that was something you had to have done. Yes, it has been rough, but I made it just somehow. I lost all of the equipment and the men when I was coming over here. Alright, well I'm glad you're okay. I'm sorry for the loss of your men though. I sent over some equipment for you to figure out where the heck you are. Then make your way over here as soon as you're ready. Over and out. Alright, with the new equipment I just received. 
I would have no issue tracking down the scientist, but I would definitely need a more reliable flyer to head over in her direction. I scouted the 145 that I bowled and knocked out. And not too far away, there was a high level female I grabbed as well. The pterodons were making love, so I would have their baby to raise and use. It would be good to work on getting a fabricator as well, so I can get my hands on some electricity for now. I found my first beaver dam that had a bunch of paste that I would find some use in. While I was expanding the base, the pterodon egg had hatched. I spent the early morning of day 12 expanding and fortifying the base a bit. The big river next to me contained a lot of silica pearls and oil that was easy to harvest. So then I was gonna be able to make some electronics and gasoline. Before the day was about to end, I was able to make a generator for electricity. On day 13, I went over to the snowy biome of the island to quickly kill off a few penguins for their polymer. Then I was able to make a chainsaw. The next day, I went over to the penguins again to kill them off with the chainsaw to get a significant amount of polymer. After I've killed a lot of creatures, I managed to hit level 60, so I was able to make a fridge to store my food. Pretty late into day 15, I was preparing my long journey to the scientist's camp. The scientist had given me coordinates where I had to head. On my way to the camp, I couldn't help but notice the beautiful sky. The starry sky on the island is absolutely mesmerizing. I had then arrived at the camp, and I joined in on a team to help the science team with their mission. She gave me a quick tour of the place, so I know where to keep my things. Most of the materials are just going into the smithy, and there's a fridge in here. Like, where can I put dinos? Do I have a terminal for this? This is just for science in here. A bit later, I tamed up a Feoma, which is known for being very good for automating the future greenhouse. Herbivores get hungry, so I had to learn how to cultivate eventually. The scientists had provided me with my own ride for my trips, which is way sooner than my pterodon. I went out to collect a bit of paste again, since there will be a big demand for it making the park. There wasn't too much for me to do now, since I had just moved to this new place. I was so exhausted, so I headed to bed early. Bright and early the next morning, I started by making myself some better armor. Then started building the greenhouse. I took a break from building the greenhouse to pick up some hidden notes to gain some experience. Well, there's one there, there's one here, there's one up there, on that shelf. I can't reach it. Then I went out to do a few belly flops on the ground to get a few seeds for the greenhouse. And then I went back to continue building the greenhouse. Ugh, oh, I had to take a break from building the greenhouse to go out and collect some cementing paste, since I couldn't make the last few pieces. Then I finished off the rest of the greenhouse so it was ready to be used. Since I didn't have any dung beetles, I did the classic old toilet trick to get my fertilizer. The day was closing in, but I had to put down a few beer barrels first. And let's not forget about the gardener as well. The next day I woke up to Dr. Kisa slaughtering her penguins. Better call Pita real quick. Either way, I had the task at hand and that was to assist her in capturing and detaining a few prehistoric dinos we were gonna have for the park. So I started by making the Trank Rifle and a few specialized starts so I can knock out these dinos to make the process easier for me to capture them. The first one we went for was the Sarophaganax, which is a big, big carnivore. It's knocked out! The Sarophaganax wasn't picky at all and he just wanted some raw mutton. Sarafaganax was one of the allosaurid theropods, which scientists described the Sarafaganax as a large species of Allosaurus. Then I went out to see what kind of dinos I could possibly try to capture. There was a very odd looking dino called Herrerasaurus. It wasn't a raptor size, but it was quite menacing looking. We then trapped him in, but he did something very unexpected. He's out. 
Oh, oh what? He, he, he pretended to be asleep just to lure us in? Was that a bait? Did you see that? We got... We got baited! There was also a huge looking Giga in the distance, which quite frankly scared us. So then we left the area and never captured the Herrerasaurus. On day 23, I made a tree platform with sap tap since we needed sap for a few recipes. Afterwards, I went out for some dung beetles. Then I spotted another Serophagonax, a perfect mate for the one we already had. So I knocked it out the best way and humane way possible. Now, they will be able to breed with each other so I could have some fertilized eggs. Since I was done with that, I went over to Dr. Ikisa to assist her in knocking out the Rexy. It fell asleep peacefully in the cage without any fuss. We gave it a bit of sheep meat since it tends to be Rex's favorite. Then we headed out to grab a bit of silica pearls from the river I used to live next to. We needed a lot of electronics for repairing our trank weapons. Then I went into the redwoods again to knock out one of these brontornis. It took a while for it to wake up, but that's another dino captured for the park. Oh, finally. There was also a lot of beehives in the redwoods, so I basically picked up a few of them too, since we were lacking a lot of honey. So with the honey I collected, I was able to make my own beehive for producing more honey. On day 26, I went out to farm a lot of metal and crystal we would possibly need for making the park. Then the rest of the day, I spent it by making bullets so I could turn them into darts. So on day 27, I started by upgrading the Trank Rifle since there was no way of us obtaining a better one. We did however limit it to a certain degree so you couldn't really max out the quality. So, with this new Trank Rifle, I set out to knock out and capture a Spinosaurus for the park. Yeah, rawr at you too. It was quite weird knocking him out since he ran away from me. I would have expected he would have wanted me since I count almost as a snack for him. I went out into the ocean to kill off some prehistoric marine life for some prime fish meat. But I didn't seem to get a hold of any. So I just gave the Spinosaurus some plain fish meat and left it there to wake up so I could capture and bring him back. Suddenly, I was in the swamp to assist Dr. Ikisa gathering a few snails since they produce a substitute to cementing paste. Dr. Ikisa wasn't thinking of our objective and captured a bunch of owls instead. <laughs> Why have you tamed those? Because they were cute and you shot him! <laughs> right between the eyeball. I got over to the Spinosaurus because he had already woken up. He is a powerhouse and does exceptional damage to the wildlife. On day 29, I had flown over to the volcano to see what other prehistoric dinos could be found there. There was two paleo Tyrannosaurus to capture, so I tried my best in knocking them out. I also discovered one of these Ultimasaurus, which is a failed experiment that Dr. Akisa had notified me that there are a few of them roaming around since they couldn't keep them detained. The Ultimasaurus had finally woken up from its slumber, so I quickly shot it to capture it in a soul trap. Ultimasaurus. The Ultimasaurus is a hybrid made from the DNA of a T-Rex, Trike, Velociraptor, Ankylo, and a Stegosaurus making it a super deadly fighting machine. Its appearance gives it the head and a body of a T-Rex, the frill and horns of a trike, the arms and legs of a Velociraptor, the back armor from an Ankylo, and its spine of a Stegosaurus. Now I had a pair of them Rexes as well, so that means I could breed them for some small babies. There was a few Acrocanthosaurus next to our park, so I decided to knock this one out. But the Acros couldn't be knocked out the normal way with Tranks, so I had to shoot it with the shotgun from time to time in order to force down its throat some highly toxic biotoxin.
After it went out cold, I threw in some kibble and waited for it to wake up so I could bring it back to the park. Since I was still waiting for the acro, I decided to feed the Dinosuchus, but this was frankly quite scary since I had to walk up to its mouth and force it to eat the kibble. Ouch! It has been quite a strange day today, trying to capture dinos for the park. I am very much used to just knocking them out. Dr. Akiza asked me to assist her in capturing a Ceratosaurus. All I had to do was give it a bit of kibble. Afterwards, I went for another acro and I did the same process again. The first acro I got would definitely be happier if I got her a friend. On day 32, we were gonna get another Rexy, so Dr. Ikisa put down a few gates, then we lured it into the cage. It went out after a few trank darts, so all we had to do was give it a bit of meat. And not too far away, I challenged a Giganotosaurus to fight me. These ones are quite intimidating and they will not go down so easily, but I wasn't gonna give up. Damn, that's cool! It took me until the very next day to make it knock out itself. Oh, it knocked itself out. But then I just had to give it a bit of food and then capture it when it woke up. Wow, that's a creature. Giganotosaurus is known as the largest known meat eater dinosaur and it was speculated that the T-Rex held that record for being the biggest carnivore but recent studies and discoveries revealed the very existence of its size. They named it the giant dinosaur Giganotosaurus carolini. I started the next day by opening a few Rex eggs in order to get my hands on an evolved Rex. And by the end of the day, I found a pretty decent evil Giganotosaurus, so I whooped out my Ultima to challenge it. It finally went out cold early into day 35. With this female Giganotosaurus, I would be able to breed these two for more babies. Then I went out on my usual scouting and came across a beach turtle. The turtle will be another great addition to the park. Then I went out to capture one of these roaming Brachiosaurus. This one was quite stubborn and wouldn't go down that easily. My new baby Evo Gigas were ready to be hatched into the world. They looked very happy, like the turtle! Then we also <gasps> got our hands on an evolved Tyrannosaur. Quite a unique dino, actually. <gasps> no way! I had to take care of a roaming boulder that was outside our park. The Giga got so angry that it screamed pushed the Sega over to the park. I went out into the snow biome again and I was trying to knock out these Uteranus, which would be a good addition to our arctic park section. Dr. Kisa showed me that the park is being built but very slowly. It's a slow process, so it would give me a lot of time to capture a bunch of more dinos for the park. A bit later I went out to capture an escaped Allosaurus. Before the day was over, I started by tranking out an Ankylosaurus, which we needed for the park. It would be a great addition. I actually had to take a break from capturing dinos, so I assisted Dr. Ikisa getting a few more Akatinas. After my break, I then went out into the snow biome since Dr. Ikisa had asked me for an addition to the Arctic Park section. Whoa! It just jumped over! Knocking this dino out required me to take drastic action and shoot its head while it was doing some kind of ice breath. I saw a few sand sharks, aka concavenators, quite unusual of a creature but was quickly knocked out with the help of a few trank darts. I felt so buggy. <laughs> it's moving so weird in the sand. A bit further away, there was a Xenoceratops, basically a small variant of an actual Triceratops that I knocked out. Could prove to be some good addition to the park as well. 
Other than those strikes, I was actually out for one of these Dinotheriums. It actually took me quite a while to understand what it wanted, and it was basically being greeted with a glass of beer. I had to look for facial signs and whenever his ears were flopping, but I just couldn't get this right. I just... no. Ouch! Okay, he was not ready to take beer. Okay, he was not ready. After a few failures, it accepted another glass of beer. Still, I had one more time to do this. I saw the floppy ears and I went for it. On day 45, we started by releasing the raptors into their new dino pen. I was getting tired of the old chalk and I had been using and was looking into getting an upgrade. After making all of the prerequisite stuff for my shotgun, I finally crafted it. It was highly customizable as well. The V83 was way more convenient than the pump shoddy. It's gonna be a breeze taking down hostiles. I was out the next day trying to capture an abyssal Sifactinus. A lot of the aquatic life didn't like it, and it ended its life before I could capture it. No! Oh my god! I tried going for another one, but it was being bullied, so now I just gave up on capturing it. A bit later, I was out with Dr. Akisa, looking for a few tames to capture for the park. There was a Draco Rex I knocked out to bring to the park. But while it was being tamed up, an Herrerasaurus bullied the living heck out of me. On day 49, I went into the Redwoods again and I located two Torvosaurus that I could capture. One of them didn't make it sadly since it had drowned. I knew it was gonna happen. While I was out, one of Dr. Akisa's failed experiments, the Indominus Rex, had broken out of the perimeter. It left a lot of death and destruction in its wake. Not only that, but Dr. Kisa told me that she and her team had done a lot more experiments, just like the Indominus, and they're out there on the island and needs to be eradicated. With me joining in on the science team, it gave me access to their data bank, so forth giving me information about each dinosaur. The Indominus Rex. The Indominus Rex is one of Dr. Akisa's experiments, the Indominus was going to be the greatest attraction to the park. It was supposed to be the very terror for both children and adults, the perfect predator to display at the park. It was later revealed that it was a created dinosaur hybrid with a mix of T-Rex DNA, Velociraptor, Therisino and modern animals, such as cuttlefish which makes it perfect for camouflaging itself in the jungle. So on day 51, Dr. Kisa had to repair and rebuild the park. Even these powerhouses were called out too. Ah, oh, poor babies. You're mad, yo. So, if we were supposed to take down the Indominus and the other failed experiments, we would need to get our hands on some real powerhouses, so I was out grabbing another Ultimasaurus. We can't possibly have it for the park, but it will be a good asset for fighting. A bit later, I spotted one of the failed experiments that had escaped a very long time ago. The Omega Rex. The Omega T-Rex is by far the largest, most ferocious predator to ever walk the Earth. It was a highly mutated dinosaur that has turned into a predator rivaling the Indominus Rex in both size and power, leaving it with absolutely zero weaknesses. The brilliant coloration and unnatural markings 
easily distinguish this colossal dinosaur as a mutated king. We couldn't do anything about Indominus and the other failed experiments yet, so I went to capture a Kentro for the park instead. A bit later into the night, we were experiencing our first electrical storm, causing a lot of disruption for our weapons. I was out later getting myself a few more assets for the park. Then I grabbed a couple of poison dart frogs too. They were highly requested by Dr. Rikisa. On day 54, I ran into another failed asset, the Death Dodo. It was quite strange to see the Death Dodo also attacking its own minions. I guess cannibalism is a thing for it. The Death Dodo, also referred to as the Dodo Defense Project, which is the purple dodo. It is also said that it has cracks in which light will occasionally flash, and electricity pulsating from the animal when it steps, but it wasn't displayed here. It's genetically enhanced dodo that shouldn't be meddled with. I went around looking for how the progress was coming along with the park. Then I prepped for going out again and capturing more assets, but I was getting close to capturing enough dinos for the park. On day 56, I came across a Sukumimus, which we didn't have yet, so I just did the usual thing and I knocked it out. This guy was super greedy and extraordinary cable didn't work. It wanted no. raw prime fish. No! No, you... What? Oh. Then I started raising a few gigas to raise up since this will be used in order to fight Indominus and the failed experiments. Then I had to get myself a Tyranno Titan. It's always cool having a lot of carnivores in a park. Nice. I capture a Smilodon as well for the Arctic enclosure. Huh? I actually spotted quite the unusual asset roaming outside. The Orolo Titan. So I had to try my best knocking it out. Meanwhile the Orolo Titan was counting some sheep, I grabbed a few Taurosaurus as well. But I wasn't quite finished yet, since there was a group of Apatosaurus I could get as well. They would make a fine addition for the park. It's just very time consuming capturing all of these assets. Uh, once again, I had to take a break from this and Dr. Rikisa showed me around the park instead. I like the trike. Oi! Ah, I found the Rexus. You did? I did finish the Rex one. Ah, look at the Spino. While I was out again, I came across a Monolophosaurus that dragged me quite heavily. I started seeing all kinds of different colors. Oh man, hallucinated for like a minute. Oh god, oh, oh I, I tagged it. <laughs> I'm back at the Arctic. I was knocking out the high level beauty. I couldn't just leave it behind, could I? Then I was gonna try again to get one of the Sif Hactinus without it getting killed. Instead, I killed myself when I got stuck in its mouth. Oh! I killed myself. There we go. Now it should be out, so all we have to do is wait. Oh, it's flopping. Oh, Lord, he's flopping. Ah, there he goes. Get those land dinos. There wasn't too much left for me to do, so I went out to grab a lot of pearls instead from the riverbed. And a bit later, while scouting around the desert area, I came across a Vastatosaurus Rex, so I had to capture it. Then, the next day, we had a new ride installed for the park, so the visitors could see each enclosure from a car ride. So, on day 62, we kinda ran out of things to do, so we skipped a lot of days, so now it should be day 93. On day 93, I was basically as prepping a horde of Giganotosaurus for the upcoming fights we were about to do. After a bit of searching, we found our first boss by the next day, the Death Dodo. 
Quite intimidating Dodo with his flock of chickens. The Death Dodo was quite a challenge and damaged our Gigas quite a lot. Nice. He gave us a couple of tech cramps as well. This is quite interesting. You can harvest it with the chainsaw for element. Okay, that was quite a lot though. You get this much element from there? On day 95, I went out in search of the next failed experiment to kill. The Juggernaut 32. I found him lurking deep in the redwoods. Juggernaut 32, also referred to the Triceratops Defense Project. The Juggernaut is a purple Triceratops with spikes down its back on the sides of its face, making it a very dangerous enhanced Triceratops. We went into battle with our Gigas and the Juggernaut was way too powerful for our Gigas. So then I brought a group of them to finish it off. Oh, it's almost dead. I finally made a replicator and a generator to power the base. That took a while. <laughs> Afterwards, I flew around for quite a while looking for another experiment, going from one biome to the next biome. I managed to find it over at the arctic biome next to the blue obelisk, but we were gonna wait until the next day so the gigas could heal. JV Evolved Ankylosaurus is not your ordinary walking tank. It's an enhanced ankylosaurus with much bigger health pool and damage, making it a versatile dinosaur in different environments. On day 96, we were playing around in the park before going after the experiment. I brought a bunch of gigas again and the UD to give them a bit of a boost. Oh, it's gonna die, it's gonna die. Oh my god, finally it's dead. I found a very interesting beam light to use. I wish I had known of it way earlier. The next failed experiment was down in the ocean depths. And if you've seen most of my videos so far, I am completely afraid of the ocean and what it holds. Colossal Megalodon is also known as a defense project. With genetic tuning has turned this megalodon into a hyper-aggressive shark, making it faster and stronger, but also displays more aggressive temperament than normal shark. We baited the shark over to the trap we had placed down. And finished him off very easily with the gigas. After we had killed the colossus megalodon, we were back to play around in the park. Woohoo! We shot a few fireworks too, alerting the last failed experiments that we were coming for them. Alpha 06, the next one up. This one looks like it could prove to be quite a challenge, so I brought most of the gigas for this. Well, it's very close. How's it going in? They're going in, Kiza. That won't help. It really hurts. One one gig is gonna die, I can see it. Oh god, oh god. Oh, there goes the giga. Three of them. Wait, did I just send him a private mic in there? Oh no! Ooh. Uh well the UD died. <laughs> I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> no, you shouldn't have. Oh, oh, he was no. so cute. No, he was max level too. Alpha 6 is known as a perfect genetic tuned T-Rex capable of pulsating electricity when it attacks, steps and roars. It doesn't possess any of the weaknesses as a normal T-Rex has and is a lot stronger, faster, but has also incredible defense against any bullets or explosions, making it the perfect killing machine. Well, with the loss of that duty, I had to go out and fetch a new one real quick. On day 99, we played around with the cannon again, and with the combination of an umbrella, we could travel pretty far.
Then it was time for killing the Omega Rex. I brought in everything since we didn't want to risk of losing any gigas. Okay, well, they're going in. That's not a good sign. What happened? He's doing like oh, 1,000, almost 2,000 damage. Yeah. I can't see itself. Oh, okay. <laughs> we killed it. Now, all we had left to do was to track down the last experiment, the Indominus, and get rid of it once and for all. The day had finally arrived. I had tracked down the Indominus, but when I arrived, it was being killed by something much, much worse. The Savage Acro. And if that very creature could defeat the Indominus, we had to take it down. I cannot fathom what it would be capable of doing, so I brought in every Giga we had and made them fight each other. Dingy attack incoming. How dingy. A lot of them kept dying, so I had a few more prepared just in case. <laughs> what was that attack? Savage Acro is very angry, be careful. The Savage Acro made the Gigas enraged like crazy. Dangerous attack incoming. Oh, please. What is it doing? Oh, it's doing the roar. Oh. Oh, we got it. Oh, just in time. Some of them were not looking too good. We had finally eradicated the island of its dangerous escape experiments and the park was now finally ready to open. Sorry for the mod not being longer, but honest truth, there isn't too much to go around in Jurassic Park mod. We had some fun, we tamed some dinos and we built Jurassic Park. I wanna thank you guys for this journey on YouTube. You guys have been the very thing to keep me going and I will continue on improving and releasing more videos. However, since Asa is out now, I will move on to that for now and put Ark on hold until later. Thank you again boys and girls, you guys mean a lot to me. Also, here's a side note, Akisa has been in almost every video I have made and she's finally starting to make her own videos. So please check her out if you wanna see some bloopers from my 100 days videos and some other things Akisa had been working on. She also streams on Twitch, so give her a follow if you want to see the next 100 days I am working on. 